you ever felt out of control of your life? As if, no matter how hard you tried, all your hopes and dreams were disappearing before your eyes. Inside everyone, there is an ability to adapt. But to be honest, adaptation may be the most difficult trait to unlock. When unfortunate situations arise in your life, it's easy to accept your fate and let the chips fall where they may. But I've realized that you have the power to manipulate your setbacks. Though it may be difficult, you need to focus on the factors you can control instead of dwelling on the ones you can't. I recently lost control of my own life when I learned the worst news of my life. It felt like my weak foundation crumbled. I spiraled for months. Even though my family and friends were there, I felt alone. Now looking back, I wasn't lonely. I was empty, scared, and powerless. I was born with a small, dime-sized dimple in the middle of my sternum. At first, it seemed okay, but it, as I grew, it started to slowly grow inward. It's hard to notice something changing when you see it every day. By adolescence, I found it difficult to breathe deeply, especially while playing sports. In a matter of one year, it grew inward so rapidly that I could fit my fist inside the crater it formed. My doctors said my severe deformation needed to be fixed and that it wouldn't be easy. Now here's where I began to lose my footing. I became depressed. I stopped caring about my future and all of my plans. I was in a dark place and I felt completely out of control and alone. I was at the lowest point of my life. It was then I realized that I could either stay at my low point or I could make a change. I grasped that there were factors I could control in this situation. I could decide who conducted the procedure and when it would happen. I could control my own fate. That day I started to rebuild the foundation that had crumbled. I met with multiple surgeons and quickly established a relationship with Dr. Hirozi, the chief pediatric surgeon at UC Davis. I decided that he would perform the surgery. I deferred the surgery for a year and scheduled it for the following summer. I refocused on my future plans. I enrolled in a summer geometry course and I decided to learn the French horn. The year passed quickly. I had never experienced surgery before and I was frightened. I had no control over the situation. My, the, my life was in the hands of my surgeons. A steel implant called the Nussbar was placed under my sternum. When I woke from surgery, I couldn't recognize my chest. It looked normal. Dr. Hirose did an amazing job, but the pain was so excruciating I couldn't raise an arm. Although I was under heavy medication, I was determined to regain my mobility. In a matter of minutes, I was able to lift my left hand a few inches, and eventually, I literally had to crawl my fingers to reach for my fork. I was out of the hospital in six days, two days earlier than anticipated, but my recovery was only beginning. I was not mentally weak, so I strategized for success. It was hard for me to go to school during my recovery because I had so many restrictions. I started by communicating my accommodations to my teachers. I set academic goals. To challenge myself, I took AP Chemistry and AP Calculus to focus on my kindling interest in engineering. By the second semester, I felt strong and just about back to normal. Just nine months after, my, after surgery, Dr. Rosie cleared me to play lacrosse again. At this point, I felt pretty good about all that I'd accomplished chest surgery and a grueling nine-month recovery all throughout the most challenging high school year of my life. I felt prepared for any setback that came my way. I was unbreakable. Two weeks later, I was suddenly derailed. When driving to school one day, my car was rear-ended. I knew something was wrong. In the ER, Dr. Hirose told me that my implant shifted 10 degrees from its proper placement. The sutures were, turned, the sutures were torn and the implant was loose inside of me. My chest started caving inward again. I would need surgery. My heart sunk. Not only was this going to set me back in school, but I also could no longer do any of the things I worked hard towards during my recovery. I couldn't play lacrosse anymore. I was back to my initial limitations. I took a step back and evaluated my new predicament. I'd faced the same test before, but this time I had a different mentality. My foundation did not crumble. I knew how to take control. I strategized to miss the least amount of school. 
so I scheduled my surgery for spring break. I returned to school and didn't let my restrictions hold me back. I was prepared. I took my APs with confidence. I couldn't play lacrosse, so I became the team manager. <clears throat> Looking back, I see that this was the most successful year of my high school career. Not despite my obstacles, but because of my obstacles. I realized what I was capable of. I achieved the highest grades of my high school career. I earned high scores on my APs along with an AP Scholar Award from College Board. I was awarded an AP, AP Chemistry Class Award, and I decided to go to the University of South Florida to, to attend a STEM for Scholars program and take 3D visualization and a STEM for Scholars courses. I gave myself one more goal. I didn't want others to experience what I underwent, so I worked on improving the stability of the nest surgical bar. Consulting with Dr. Hirose, I, con I gained an understanding of the intricacies of the nest bar, and I engineered a new stabilizer for the implant. I acquired this video of the nest procedure thanks to the Cleveland Institute to show how the surgery is performed. I used my 3D visualization skills to engineer a new stabilizer and show how it's used in conjunction with the nest bar. Here's my prototype. It's about 50% reduction of the nest bar. On the end in green, you can see the stabilizer that I engineered. It's a simple design. It attaches a few inches from the end of the bar to create a Y shape. This offers a superior hold of the implant because it allows for the bar to brace at four points. I crafted this prototype using a 3D printer, and when I showed it to Dr. Hirose, he was, he was so impressed that he offered me a summer research position summer research position with him at UC Davis along with his engineering team. I'm now on a path towards becoming an engineer. Because of my ordeals, I received mentorship from Dr. Hirose, a summer research opportunity, and I engineered my own stabilizer. This wasn't the, this wasn't the way I saw my life unfolding. This wasn't the path I had for myself. I now know that the obstacles that confront us are not meant to derail us, but to sharpen us, to push us to discover who we really are, to help us to learn how to adapt. The future is unpredictable and setbacks are inevitable. However, if you remember to collect yourself, set goals, and continue adapting, you can steer your future. Thank you.